Welcome everybody. Welcome to Claydask. My name is Syed and today I'm going to talk about change management in the cloud with of course specifically related to AWS, right? So let's dive right in and take a look at how do we actually manage change management, which is an important concept, but let's dive right in and take a look. So like every business function, right? Change management should act as an enabler for your organization to succeed. So just as every business has some kind of finance function to ensure that it optimizes spending. So change management is essential for optimizing business risks. And you will benefit from change management if you have migrated to the cloud or either have a hybrid environment or are just totally in the cloud. An effective change management process simply enables agility, reduces time to market, it also ensures that resources deliver business value, reduces failed changes, and of course helps delivery to businesses. An effective record of change should also act as one of your first troubleshooting references when something happens. And of course research has found that high performance or frequent deployments, lead time for change, and change failure rates are correlated with version control continuous delivery, and automated testing. So making frequent, small, and reversible changes are essential to achieve agility and are assigned to AWS best practices as well and strategies for designing and operating cloud workloads. Now, deployments of new services, software and patches, and configuration changes can all be automated and they should still be governed by change process. In the cloud, you can enable governance through policy, automation with complete audit trail of deployment steps, right? You can also preserve agility by penalizing, for example, the rollback changes. In fact, to achieve agility, organization must be willing to roll back changes that have adverse business consequences and then build the automation to make this happen. The ITIL framework basically the cloud adoption framework and AWS CAF or cloud adoption framework, right, are compatible. They're, they kind of work together. So what is ITIL? It's basically an internationally recognized best practice approach to IT service management, ITSM. It basically provides a formal and universal standard for enterprise organizations seeking to have their you know, services managed, audited, and certified. So now, like ITIL, AWS CAF, Cloud Adoption Framework, simply organizes and describes all the activities involved in planning, creating, managing, and supporting modern IT services. It offers practical guidance and comprehensive guidelines for establishing, developing, running, and cloud-based capabilities. The AWS CAF simply organizes guidance into six areas, right, which are you know, like for example, called perspectives, called business, people, governance, platform, security, and finally operations. Now, ITIL change management is part of service transition, which means that the transitioning of an update or something new from service design to service operations. Change management basically aims to standardize these processes in efficient handling for all the changes. So in terms of system or process, efficiency means maximizing productivity, right? While minimizing wasted effort or cost. So once again, change management is defined as a process responsible for controlling the life cycle of all changes within the pipeline. The primary objective of change management is to enable beneficial changes to be made with minimum disruptive to IT services. So. Every change should deliver business value. The change management process should be geared towards enabling and delivering. So how does basically change management in the cloud happen? Let's take a look at that. The key to remember is that all changes should be you know, delivering business value and that's the bottom line. And change management should be focused on optimizing business risks in a way that to maximize productivity and minimize wasted effort or costs. So the AWS Cloud Enabling Automation, or the auto, it basically optimizes this risk, right, by four main factors. First, minimizing the possibility of human error. Two, 
enabling the creation of identical environments or predictable or testable outcomes to changes. Three, number three, removing the requirement to submit changes to scale infrastructure to meet business demands. And of course, fourth is automatically recovering from failure and rolling back the failed changes. So what are the benefits of, you know, it can basically dramatically reduces the risks, right? It increases business agility, ultimately delivering more business value, which is exactly what change is all about. The key concepts of change management remain the same within the AWS cloud. And change delivers business value and it should be efficient. So agile methodologies, for example, and automation capabilities of the AWS cloud, they go hand in hand with the core principles of change management because they're designed that way. AWS has designed that way, which is great. For example, if an application suffers a fault in a traditional IT environment, right? Like application updates or operating system patches are installed or deployed on a server. An engineer may be tasked to investigate you know, or either apply a fix or deploy a new server. Either of these tasks would require an emergency change and could put the business at risk for a significant amount of time. So within the AWS cloud, you can use auto scaling groups to automate this process. Right? That's an example. And failures can be automatically detected using predefined health checks. And servers can be automatically replaced you know, with exactly the same configurations. Now, this simple scenario shows the clear benefit of automation. Human error is eliminated, configuration drift is also eliminated, and business risk is certainly minimized, you know, and the time to recover is dramatically reduced. So, how do we adapt to change management to the cloud? There are basically two areas in which change process may need to be adapted. Because the risk and impact to the business of a failed change is greatly reduced, Changes can be made more frequently and with, you know, over time, for example. The rollback plan, for example, as a result, the secondary consideration would be the acceptance of rolling back changes. So if failed changes, for example, have much lower impact due to the speed and consistency of rollback, activating rollback should be considered, you know, be part of the normal process. Now, this is particularly true if it is possible to quickly remediate the issue and certainly push it through the same automated pipeline to quickly deliver the original intended business value of that change. Now, with these considerations in mind, if automation pipelines and deployment methods are in place, it may be possible to reconsider the approach to standard changes. Or standard change is where there's basically a defined trigger to initiate a change request, right? In addition, by the way, a standard change, actions are well known, documented, and proven. Authority is given in advance or pre-authorized, and the risk is usually low. So if the appropriate automation testing and deployment strategies are put in place, it should result in a scenario where large, you know, infrequent and risky changes are transformed into smaller, frequent, low-risk changes. So, by understanding the risk reduction strategies that are enabled by the AWS cloud, it should be possible and may even be necessary to widen the scope of the standard change to include deployments that have been previously considered as normal changes due to the risk associated with those traditional IT environments. So, as changes become more frequent due to agile methodologies and increased automation, there's certainly a risk that change management becomes overburdened by normal changes, which can certainly lead to delaying changes, right? So important details may be missed because changes are not properly scrutinized due to resource constraints. Now, both of these scenarios introduce business risk with change management basically aims to optimize and addresses. So in an environment of small, frequent changes, standard changes should become the new normal, so proper scrutiny can be given to normal changes, optimizing business risks and enabling delivery of business value. So after, for example, a release has been you know, created, change management process and all the appropriate project management right, released and deployed, management steps have been followed, 
The release is then deployed and enters into a process of service validation and testing. Now, changes introduce business value. We know that. It's important that releases meet customer expectation also, and IT operations teams are able to support this new added business value. So within the AWS cloud, for example, right? Amazon CloudWatch provide you with data, actionable insights to monitor your application running on AWS or on-premise, respond to system-wide changes, and get a unified view of operation health. Now, you can set alarms, you can visualize logs, you can also take a look at metrics side by side, take automated actions, troubleshoot issues, and then discover insight to keep your applications running smoothly. So CloudWatch, of course, provides different features such as dashboards, right? You can have synthetic monitoring. You CloudWatch applications have insights, right? And of course, that's pretty good metrics and tools, right? And that basically ensures that actionable alarms are also present to prevent or remediate against service degradation or failure. Now, finally, change implementation has a direct impact on the availability of workloads and the ability to recover from logical disasters. So if you need to take a look at that, certainly take a look at the AWS well-architected framework reliability pillar. So let's conclude to summarize, right? Automation, integration, and deployment tools in the cloud allow the business to make small, frequent changes that reduce business risk and introduce business value at an increased rate. Now, change processes should be adapted to reflect what is actually being changed, the increase in the amount of change and reduced risk associated with these changes. So, for changes that do not take advantage of the automation, by the way, then consistency or rollback, the change process should certainly remain as is. And finally, it's always worth considering the business impact and the risk of not implementing the change or introducing delay. And remembering that the purpose of managing change is to optimize business risk. So, that's all about change management in the cloud. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. I'll be glad to answer. My name is Syed, and of course, let's move on to our next lecture.